G'day guys, in this video I'm going to be summarizing for you simple pulleys and cables. So let's begin by drawing what is perhaps one of the most simple pulley systems you will ever see. Let's consider a single drum which is pinned at its center, so it's free to rotate but not free to move. And let's say that we've got a single rope wrapped around this pulley like this. And let's say that connected to this rope we've got a small mass of mass M1 and we've got a larger mass of mass M2. Now what I intend to show you in this video is if we make a certain set of assumptions then we can show that the tension in this rope is constant everywhere. And another thing I want to show you in this video is a step-by-step -step solution you can use to figuring out the accelerations of each of these masses, not only for this simple problem I've got just here, but also for many more complicated assemblies too. Okay, so let's go into detail about these assumptions. If we assume that one, the pulley is massless, and if we assume that the pin is frictionless, and if we assume that the rope is also massless, then we can prove that the tension in this cable will be constant everywhere. And I might do a separate proof video on that, but we can prove that the tension is constant. Now that we have that covered, let's talk about a step-by-step -step approach you can use to finding the accelerations of each of these masses. Step one will be to draw the free body diagrams of each of these masses. So let me do that for you. If we make a cut selection like this around this first mass, then the free body diagram will look like this. And if we make a free body diagram of the second mass, then it will look like this. Notice that these two forces are our forces due to gravity, and these forces here are our constant tension force in our rope. Once we have that sorted, our next step is to define axes from a fixed point. So typically in engineering textbooks you'll see this type of thing, where they draw an arrow just here to denote position. I find this a little bit confusing and my personal preference is to define it from the pin of the pulley just here. So if you were to define the position of mass M1, I usually define it from the pin itself and would look like this. This would be a distance I equal x1, and I'll define the position of x2 as this just here. Once we have our axes defined, now we can apply Newton's laws. So step three is to apply the sum of forces is equal to ma. Now we can apply Newton's law for each individual block. So let's apply it for this block first. Well, the sum of forces is equal to ma in this case will be m1g minus t is equal to m1a1. So notice the a1 is the acceleration of block 1 and because we've considered downwards as positive that means this will be positive whereas tension will be negative because it's upwards. Now let's apply the same formula to this larger block. Well because downwards is considered positive it's the same story. It will be m2g minus t is going to be equal to m2a2. Now you might think we've got enough information now to solve for the acceleration of block 1 and the acceleration of block 2. Unfortunately that's not true. We've got three unknowns, t, a1, and a2, and only two equations. We need another equation. So step 4, and let's see if I can fit this in here, Step four is to find an acceleration relationship. Now in this particular simplified problem, the acceleration relationship is quite easy. We know that the acceleration of this block downwards will be equal to the acceleration of this block upwards. So in other words, we can say that A2 is gonna be equal to negative A1. That's something we can easily say in this particular problem. However, for more complicated um, pulley assemblies, you typically have to use constrained motion, and I've done several videos on that as well. So if you use, if you follow all of these steps, you can find enough equations to solve simultaneously to find the accelerations of each individual mass. And you can apply these steps 
for even much more complicated pulley assemblies. Now before we end this video, I also want to briefly mention that this first assumption we made at the very start, that we assume that the pulley is massless, is a big assumption. Later on in most dynamics courses, we don't make this assumption, and hence we don't assume that the tension in this cable is constant. And, and the way we do that, the way we solve problems, if that's the case, is we consider something called the moment of inertia. But anyway, that's a talk for a separate video. For simple pulleys and cables, this step-by-step -step solution will be more than adequate. I hope that made sense, guys. I hope you learned something. Cheers.